dear children we are fortunate to meet again through this mirror of dhamma program to share the buddha teachings to make our lives successful and to overcome the wrong views we have with the right views that was taught by the supreme buddha so all these things the success of a human being is always depending on the supreme buddha's guidance the real success of life success means not just earning money and building houses success means being a person with enormous qualities being a virtuous person being and living without greediness being a generous person and then being a person who can see good in others not seeing faults in others not harming others not cheating others being helpful to others being kind to others and always being energetic by eradicating bad thoughts in the mind so these things can be only practiced with the guidance of the supreme buddha so through this mirror of dhamma program we are trying to give that guidance through the buddha's teachings so fortunately we have met again through this program and i'm happy to share the buddha's teachings with you all children from many countries take part in this program and write to us and the amazing part is now many children have started uh, making presentations and then they have connected with the monks of uh, mahamena buddhist monastery with the kalambo dharma friends uh, buddhist monastery in kalambo with the uh, cdf buddhist monastery in kalambo and now they are doing a lot of volunteer work they are preparing uh, presentations and then they send poems and they help the monks to organize programs and finding new children to attend to the dharma programs and the children meet the monks through the zoom meetings and they listen to other dhamma sermons so all these things were developed through this mirror of dhamma program and some children have started uh, preparing subtitles for the singhala dhamma sermons for the dhamma sermons done in singhala so all these opportunities were open for kids through this mirror of dhamma program so don't miss this program listen to the programs even the time zone is different for y'all yet you can watch this program through the youtube channel the shraddha tv management the people will the uncles will uh, upload them in time immediately once they are ready to be uploaded so stay uh, touch with the program keep in touch with the program keep in touch write to the email address if you want to get sermons of the recent sermons you can write to the email address that appears in the screen so if you have difficulties uh, finding the recent dhamma programs if you have any inquiries write to this email address then the people in charge will reply to you so now uh, let us go for refuge to buddha dhamma sangha and observe five precepts like good children and then uh, we will do some chanting and listen to a wonderful dhamma sermon नमो तस् भगवत अर्हत संबुद्ध नमो तस् भगवत अर्हत संबुद्ध नमो तस् भगवत अर्हत संबुद्ध बुद्ध शरण गच्छा दम शरण गच्छा संगं शरण गच्छा दुतीयी बुद्ध शरण गच्छा दुतीयी दम शरण गच्छा 
द्वितीयं पी संग शरण गच्छामि तथियम पी बुद्ध शरण गच्छामि तथियम पी दम शरण गच्छामि तथियम पी संग शरण गच्छामि साधु 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 नाउ टू ऑब्जर्व द फाइव प्रिसेप्ट से आफ्टर मी आई ऑब्जर्व द प्रिसेप्ट ऑफ एब्सटेनिंग फ्रॉम किलिंग बी I observe the precept of abstaining from stealing I observe the precept of abstaining from sexual misconduct I observe the precept of abstaining from telling lies I observe the precept of abstaining from taking intoxicating drinks and drugs i follow these precepts for happiness in this life for rebirth in heaven and to realize the four noble truths in this gautama buddha's dispensation sadhu 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 namo buddhaya dear children let's chant the more parit in english for us to gain a protection and the reason for us to chant this mora parit is to train you all to chant this mora parit every day so if you can chant the mora parit every morning and in the evening as well as whenever you leave home before you just after you get into the vehicle Uh, when you are traveling if you can chant this mora parit it will be a protective discourse for you it will be a great protection for your life you know the background story right the background the background story is there was a golden peacock who was unable to uh, catch by seven generations seven generations tried to trap this peacock this golden peacock but seven kings seven generation means more than seven kings were unable to catch this peacock because this peacock used to chant this spirit so if a peacock was protected for seven generations and think as human beings as wise human beings if we chant this by knowing the meanings how much we could be protected so let's chant this now together with me namo tassa bhagavato arhato sammasambuddhassa 
नमो तस् भगवत अर हतो समुद्ध नमो तस् भगवत अर हतो समुद्ध द सन द वन किंग विथ आईस राइस spreading golden rays and illuminating the great earth i pay homage to you the sun spreading golden rays and illuminating the great earth guarded today by you May I live through the day those are hands who are knowers of all truths I pay homage to them may they keep watch over me homage to the liberated ones homage to the enlightened ones homage to the fourfold enlightenment homage to the liberated ones homage to their liberation having made this protection the body sat the peacock sets out in search of food the sun one king with eyes descend spreading golden rays and illuminating the great earth i pay homage to you the sun spreading golden rays and illuminating the great earth guarded today by you may i live through the night those are hands who are knowers of all truths I pay homage to them may they keep watch over me homage to the enlightened ones homage to the fourfold enlightenment homage to the liberated ones homage to the liberation having made this protection the bodhisattva peacock lived happily etena satchena suvatti hotu by this truth may they all be well be साधु 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 लाइक दिस चिल्ड्रन बाय नोइंग द मीनिंग्स इफ यू कैन चांट इन पाली और इन इंग्लिश एवरी डे अर्ली मॉर्निंग द फर्स्ट थिंग आफ्टर वेनरेटिंग द बुद्ध आफ्टर रिकलेक्टिंग द ट्रिपल जेम्स द क्वालिटीज ऑफ द ट्रिपल जेम्स एंड आफ्टर प्रैक्टिसिंग लविंग काइंडनेस और बिफोर प्रैक्टिसिंग लविंग काइंडनेस यू कैन चांट द मोर पीरित start the day because here in the mora pirita uh, you will be worshiping the buddha you will be worshiping the great arahants the liberated ones so worshiping the great arahant the great supreme buddha will uh, you will receive a protection from that and that protection will help you to live happily you will be able to abandon bad people and then uh, if any calamities will be avoided any danger shall be avoided and you will be able to associate wise people and you will have a good environment to live so keep on uh, chanting the mora pirita i do a humble request from all the children and all the adults 
to get used to chant more paritta it is a very useful paritta for us so now uh, let's say sadhu three times and go to a dhamma sermon let's listen to a buddha's teaching sadhu 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 namo buddha sadhu 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 namo tassa bhagavato arhato samma sambuddhassa namo tassa bhagavato arhato samma sambuddhassa namo tassa bhagavato arhato samma sambuddhassa homage to the blessed one the worthy one the supremely enlightened one sadhu 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 namo buddhaya may our homage be to our teacher loka swami vahansa sadhu 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 dear children today we are going to learn a beautiful story and the reason for this uh, story for me to teach the story is i am hoping to teach you a sutta which i have promised earlier to teach you all the name of this sutta is chula kama vibhanga sutta and the reason for the blessed one to preach that sutta there's a background story so the background story is something related to kama and it's about a merchant a merchant has passed away and was born as a dog and then the buddha recognized him and then their own that merchant's son got angry with the buddha and that son went to the buddha and asked 14 questions then only the buddha taught this sutta the name of this sutta is chula kama vibhanga sutta so in today's program i don't think i would have enough time to explain the sutta but the background story i will explain the background story first the reason for the supreme buddha to teach the chula kama vibhanga sutta even the background story is very interesting it gives a big message a very meaningful message for us as you all know children our buddha the blessed one blessed one the first meditation he absorbs the first meditation he does in the early morning is the meditation on compassion blessed one radiates his compassion towards all living beings in this world after he wakes up around 2 am he looks at the world and sees to whom he could help on that day who is meritorious enough to go for refuge to the supreme buddha who is meritorious enough to apply the buddha's teachings who is meritorious enough to become a stream entrant or maybe a one returner or maybe a non returner or sometimes it could be a monk who could become a arahant on that day sometimes it could be a person who would die on the same day in the evening if such people did not meet the blessed one on that day they would be born in a bad place once there was a grandmother who was about to die who was to die on the same day but just because of supreme buddha's arrival just because supreme buddha visited that grandmother that grandmother was able to worship the buddha and then that grandmother was born among devas she received more than 100000 devas in a previous life she was a poor lady but then after worship in the blessed one she was born among devas 
then Marta Kundali, Marta Kundali died when he was sleeping on a plank, when he was kept outside the house, when he was very ill, then Blessed One went to help Marta Kundali. And even Marta Kundali was born among Devas and Marta Kundali was able to change his father as well, correct his father after Marta Kundali was born among Devas. Chattamanavaka Chattamanavaka was about to die. That day, Blessed One came, went and taught Dhamma to Chattamanavaka, taught the value of going for refuge to Buddha Dhamma Sangha and gave five precepts. After meeting the Buddha, after maybe about half an hour, Chattamanaka was killed by bandits. There were many incidents like that, children. Then there was another person called, uh, Buddha preached a sutta called Dhatu Vibhanga Sutta. Then uh, there was a person called, uh, the person who learned Dhamma was uh, Pukkusati. Buddha taught Dhamma to Pukkusati. Then Pukkusati went to look for robes, but then uh, he couldn't find robes. Even Pukkusati passed away. But he got, he achieved fruits in the Buddha's path of Dhamma. He was able to realize the Buddha's teachings before he passed away. So the Blessed One's compassion was incomparable. It was uh, unimaginable for a normal living being. Today's story is about a person called Subha. And his father's name was Todeya. This father, this person Todeya, he was uh, a village headman. And that name of the village is Todi. So since he was the village headman, he was named as Todeya. So his son was named as Subha because this son was very beautiful, handsome, good looking. That's why his son was named as Subha. But this Todeya, he was so greedy. This Todeya was greedy. And uh, this Todeya advised his son in this way. Son, if you give, you will lose. If you accumulate, you will get. Just like white ants, just like ants building up an anthill, just like bees building a beehive, just like bees building a beehive, we should accumulate wealth. We should accumulate wealth. So this is how Todeya advised his son Subha. And this Todeya, even the Blessed One was living near to his house, near to his mansion. He did not offer even some gruel to the Supreme Buddha. Why? His idea was if we give, we will lose. But then this Todeya died. And then this Todeya died. Then one day, the Blessed One, when he was developing his compassion, when he was uh, early morning, when he absorbed to his meditation on compassion, he saw Subha. Then he thought, today I would help Subha who had wrong views, who thought that if we give, we would lose, and who had the idea that to collect wealth, just like ants building an anthill, just like bees building a beehive, who was crazy over earning money and who was greedy, living without gaining merit, the Blessed One thought to help Subha. Then the Blessed One left the Jaitavana monastery and went. Blessed One went and then uh, when the Blessed One was uh, going on arms round, when the Blessed One was passing the Subha's house, there was a dog outside the Subha's house. This dog barked at the Blessed One. This dog barked to the Blessed One. Then the Blessed One said like this, Even during your lay life, you yelled and scolded me. Now even as a dog, you continue your bad practices. Oh, Todeya, you became a dog. 
Now, who is this dog? The blessed one recognized this dog. Who is this dog? It was Todeya. Subha's father, after he died, he was born as a dog in the same house. Now, blessed one said, Todeya, you still bark at me. And then blessed one left. That's all blessed one did. That's how blessed one helped Subha, not the dog. Now, what happened? Immediately this dog ran to the kitchen and slept in the stove. Stove means not the gas stove that we have today. Those days, they put firewood to cook. Then once they have finished cooking, they will take out the, uh, the charcoal and the coal and the ashes. But the stove will, will feel very the stove will be very warm. So the dogs will go and sleep in the stove. This dog immediately ran to the kitchen and slept in the stove. Honestly, this dog was given, actually this dog was given a special bed, a special sofa to sleep. Because Subha loved this dog so much. But then this time, when he was called Thodeya, this dog he recognized that Buddha has recognized him. He realized that Buddha has recognized him. And then he was trembling and with fear, he slept in the stove in the kitchen. Then after Subha returned home, he was looking for the dog and then he found that dog is in the stove in the kitchen. Then he asked why? He asked the workers, why don't you bring him back and keep in the beds, on these comfortable beds and seats? Then they said, no, he's, re he's refusing. This dog is refusing. Then the Subha asked, what happened today? Why he is frightened? Then the workers said, look, the Blessed One called your dog by your father's name. The Blessed One called your dog Thodeya. Then this Subha got angry. Why this Subha was not a disciple of the Supreme Buddha? Then this Subha, he thought, my father, he told, he said, my father was born among Brahmas. How can the Blessed One make my father a dog? No, no, Blessed One is telling lies. Let me go and accuse the Blessed One for telling lies. Blessed One can't do this every day. Let me handle this with the Blessed One. And then he thought, I will accuse him of lying in person. I will go and handle with the Blessed One. Then... This Subha approached the Blessed One and asked the Blessed One, Did you call my dog Todeya? Then Blessed One did not say yes or any other thing. The Blessed One said, Okay Subha, had your father possessed anything that he had not shown you to? Did your father, did your father had anything valuable which he has not given to you before he died. Then he said, Blessed One, uh, calmly inquired, Blessed One calmly inquired from Subha. Then he said, yes, he had a walking stick. Then there was his plate worth 100,000 gold coins. And then there was his slippers, 100,000 worth. There were 100,000 gold coins. All those things I did not get after my father passed away. I couldn't find them in the palace. Then Buddha said, Okay, Subha, there is a way to find it. You can go and ask the dog. Don't get angry with me. It's your father's mistake. But now if you don't trust me, go and ask the dog. The dog will convince you. Then the Blessed One said, Subha, you go home. Go to your home and prepare some milk rice with concentrated milk, no water and feed it to the dog. Then when the dog falls asleep, ask it, Father, where is the golden plate that you ate? Where are the slippers? So after feeding the milk rice, it might fall asleep. Then ask, where is the slippers? Where are the slippers? What happened to the golden foot plate? then immediately this dog will dig the place where he has hid it and then you will know what has happened to your father. Then this Subha went home 
with the hope of accusing the supreme buddha thinking that this will not happen but then what happened he went home he fed the dog milk rice and when he was about to fall asleep he asked this where is the where are the golden slippers then this dog ran and started digging the earth and found the golden slippers gold coins foot plate the golden foot plate then only he realized that beings are depending on karma whatever we think say do intentionally we will accumulate a karma and will give results there are good karma bad karma good and bad karma and neither good neither bad the noble eightfold path is neither good neither bad neither black neither white that will lead you to non existence that will lead you to eradicate lust and gain delusion this human world is a mixture of bad and good karma divine worlds are good karma brahma worlds are white karma the noble eightfold path is neither white neither black so we should be following the noble eightfold path so our noble eightfold path will be fulfilled if you do good deeds with the hope of realizing the four noble truths we should do good deeds with the hope of realizing the four noble truths if not for the good deeds we do we will become a merchant again will die and become a dog like this so we should after doing something wholesome we should always think may this good deed help me to realize the four noble truths to do in words have that hope children develop that hope after doing a wholesome deed think may i become a stream entrant from this have that hope not to pass your exams not to get a beautiful body those things we will receive when you have the hope of realizing the four noble truths then this subha realized the true nature of this world understood that all the beings are depending on karma not only buddhist people are depending on karma all the living beings are depending on karma he realized that and then he went to the buddha he went to the blessed one and then subha asked blessed one 14 questions and upon receiving a satisfying answer subha went for refuge to the triple gem wholeheartedly so subha asked 14 questions from the blessed one what were the 14 questions now this you can find from the chula kama vibhanga sutta in madhyam nikaya in the third book blessed one some beings are short lived some beings are long lived some beings are some beings have many disorders some beings have minor disorders some are ugly some are very beautiful some are very powerful some are not powerful some are rich some are poor some are born in uh, low caste families some are born in high caste families so some individuals are wise some people are wise some people are unwise then he asked dear blessed one among these human beings among the individuals born as human beings some possess inferior characteristics some possess superior characteristics what is the reason or cause behind this then buddha said meritorious subha beings are owners of their karma here to their karma then karma is their place of origin karma is their relative karma is their refuge it is karma that divide beings into inferior and superior then he said blessed one i don't understand the meaning of what master gotham has said in brief without explaining in detail master gotham please teach me this matter in detail so i can understand the meaning then the blessed one started explaining why some beings are living for a short time why some beings live for a long time and why some beings have lot of diseases why some beings have less diseases why some people are born in high caste high class families and why some beings are born in low class families don't you like to learn this okay now see how meritorious this subha was this subha was born in a greedy family under a greedy father he was instructed to accumulate wealth like white ants like ants building a ant hill not to practice generosity now see how much buddha had to struggle to 
teach the Buddha's teachings to Subha. Buddha had to go on arms round. Then had to call that dog Thodeya. Then, then the Subha had to come to the Blessed One and argue the Blessed One, argue with the Blessed One. And then he had to go back home and feed the dog milk rice and then come back and learn Dhamma. Now see the value of the Supreme Buddha. What can we do today? Today the Dhamma is there. But those stories are there. Then through these stories and Dhamma still we can change our lives. Don't wait until we become dogs. We shouldn't behave like Thodeya. We shouldn't be born like Thodeya in future births. So have a strong determination to protect your precepts. To practice generosity. Learn about karma. Be aware that we are depending on karma. And live life in a wonderful way. And may all of us realize the Four Noble Truths in this Gautama Buddha's dispensation. Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. So today we learn the background story and the first part, the beginning of the Chula Kamavibhanga Sutta. Let's learn the rest of the sermon on next Saturday. Namo Buddhaya. Teruvan Saranaya. Nama Buddhaya. Dear children, today we are going to uh, practice the impermanence meditation. We should try to recollect and think how impermanent our eyes, ear, nose, tongue, body and mind are. And to understand the impermanence nature, today I thought of uh, explaining in detail how our eyes can be impermanent, how our ears can be impermanent how the tongue can be impermanent, how the body can be impermanent, how the mind can be impermanent. So, this meditation will be played in a couple of programs until you get used to the meditation. So, we decided to teach you this meditation for you to really, for you to understand really what this impermanence meditation is and then uh, to think wisely um, according to the true nature of your eyes and then when you learn this impermanence meditation you will be able to be detached to what you see you will be able to be detached to what you hear you will be able to be detached to what you smell usually what happens when you see things when you see beautiful things we get attracted once we get attracted we need it then we will get it after we get it we will lose it then again we will feel sad then then other people also might need to get and grab your belongings. Then you will fight, you will quarrel. So see what happens because of beautiful things, children. But uh, even if you are using beautiful and valuable things, if you can have a detached mind towards those things, you won't fight, quarrel and accumulate bad karma. What happens when you fight, quarrel and get attached to things, you will accumulate a bad karma. And then that bad karma will lead you to be born in a bad place. Then again you will start suffering. Now see, how did this start? Just by getting attached to something, then you get it, then you, then you survive and then you struggle to protect it, then you fight, then you quarrel, then you argue to maintain and protect those things, to save those things, then you accumulate karma, then those karma give results, then again you are reborn in a bad place. Even if you come to human world, you will have these bad habits of fighting with others. Then, then again, you accumulate bad karma. So then that will lead you to go in this sansara continuously to be born and dead, to be born and dead again and again and to fight again and again and to quarrel again and again and end up in a prison. No peace, no harmony. So when you see unpleasant things, you get opposed, you get angry. So that anger also can be abandoned by practicing the impermanence med meditation. Then when you lose your loved ones, you will feel upset. And then delusion, you will not, when you do not know the true nature, the four noble truths, you will live very, uh, you will live with sadness and sorrow and with depression. So why do, why should we live with depression and sadness when there is a way to live happily? 
So this impermanence meditation, if you practice this impermanence meditation very well, he is considered as a faithful follower of the Supreme Buddha. He will not die without becoming a stream entrant. He would not die without becoming a stream entrant. So practice impermanence meditation every day. Why? You will become a faithful disciple of the Supreme Buddha. A Saddhanusari disciple of the Supreme Buddha. And a Saddhanusari disciple, a Dhammanusari disciple will not die without becoming a stream entrant. Don't you like that protection? Then let's practice the impermanence meditation. Close your eyes. Think wisely. Think according to what I say. Now sit in a comfortable posture, children. Sit in a comfortable posture now. Cross your legs. Keep one palm on the other palm and rest it. Now keep your back straight. Keep your head straight. Don't look here and there. Don't press your eyes. Gently close your eyes. Gently close your eyes. Now during the meditation, don't let other thoughts to distract you and take away and take you away from meditation. So listen to me. Now think according to what I say. Now think about your eyes. Think where your eyes are. Now think about your eyes. This eye is impermanent. 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 Why this eye is impermanent? This eye is made out of muscles, made out of four great elements. This I is subject to change. The I can get infected at any time. The I is subjected to diseases. The I can lose vision any time. We can get blind any time. The I will get old one day. Just like our body gets old, our eye will get old one day. There will be one day you will not be able to open your eyes. When people get old, they can open their eyes. They cannot see the world anymore. They will not be able to see the world anymore. This eye is impermanent. 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 We can't keep this I under our control. It's not me. It's not mine. It's not under our control. Then, this I like to say beautiful things. This I would like to say beautiful things again and again. But remember, whatever we wish to see from these eyes, those forms are not permanent, are impermanent, will change any time. Are impermanent, are impermanent. The forms are impermanent, impermanent, impermanent. The form is not me, not mine, not under my control. Understand the true nature of forms. The things we saw in the past are not there today. The things we see in the present will not seen, will not be seen in the future. So why we should get attached to the things we see? So remember the I is impermanent and the forms are also impermanent. Then the eye consciousness, that's from through the eye consciousness, we cognize forms. Now, dead bodies does not have a consciousness. Now, we see the world because of consciousness, we cognize things. So, when the eye, form, and consciousness 
works, what happens, the contact take place. The combination of three things, eye, forms, consciousness, the eye contact is formed. Then we will feel things. So we should understand that with the combination of impermanent things, we are feeling things. So those feelings will also be impermanent. Why? We are seeing things from impermanent things. And then we will also feel an impermanent feeling. So why should we get attached or angry or deluded? Same with the ears, children. This ear is also impermanent. This ear is made out of four great elements, made out of muscles. And then this ear is made out of Nama Rupa. This ear has the ability to feel things. But all these things, even Nama Rupa is impermanent. Name and form. Then this ear, there are disgusting things inside the ear. So why should we satisfy a such a ear by pleasant sounds, by songs? If you have a desire to listen to songs again and again, if your parents don't let you, think, I'm trying to satisfy a ear that is filled with disgusting things. This is made with muscles. This ear has a disgusting nature. This ear is impermanent, children. And this ear is subjected to change. This ear is subject to old. Can get infected any time. Then the things we hear are also impermanent. Then whatever we feel through the ear, through the ear, ear contact, what are the feelings? Those feelings are also impermanent. So the ear is impermanent, the sounds are impermanent, the ear consciousness is impermanent, the ear contact, ear, sounds, consciousness, the combination of that is ear contact is impermanent, then the feeling we feel through that ear contact is also impermanent. Now let's think about the nose, children. The nose is also impermanent. Covered with mucus, covered with dust, covered with phlegm. This nose is impermanent, impermanent, impermanent. Not me, not mine. This nose is not under our control, children. This nose, one day, we will not be able to smell properly. Then the odors that we smell are also impermanent. If there is a good smell, that is for a reason. So we shouldn't get attached to good fragrant and shouldn't get opposed to the bad fragrant both. By end of the day, we will start accumulating karma, which we should be aware. So the smells are also impermanent. The nose is impermanent. The nose is not me, not mine, not under my control. The smells are impermanent. The smells are not me not mine, not under my control. Then the consciousness of the nose is impermanent. Then the nose contact is impermanent. Then the feeling that we feel through the contact in the nose is also impermanent. Then why should we get attached? Then the tongue is also impermanent. This tongue that we like to taste various delicious food is made with muscles and it's very impermanent. 
this tongue if we don't clean this tongue this tongue will smell very bad this tongue will get rotten one day why should we satisfy a tongue like that when we are unable to satisfy our tongues when we don't get to eat delicious food every day we get upset why we don't realize that we are trying to satisfy a tongue that has a disgusting nature the tongue is impermanent the tongue is impermanent impermanent the tongue is not me not mine not under my control even the taste that we taste through the tongue any good taste is because of a reason any food would get rotten after some time the moment the food get mixed with saliva the taste of the food disappears reduces decreases so if the tongue is impermanent if it is not under our control if it is not mine why should get why should we quarrel and fight to eat delicious food if we get we can eat but if we don't get we should have patience then the taste is also impermanent 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 the taste is not me not mine not under my control then the consciousness of the tongue is also impermanent then the combination of tongue consciousness and the taste which is the contact is also impermanent and then the feeling born because of tongue contact is also impermanent temporary is for a short period why should we fight and struggle for things that we get to experience for a short period why should we get angry with our parents for a taste that we are going to experience for a short period why we should become greedy to share our delicious food with others if if we eat if that food that we eat will give a temporary happiness why should we be reluctant to offer food to others we shouldn't be reluctant why even if we eat it will be a very temporary happiness but if you offer something the happiness will be for a long time why you gain a merit by offering to others then this body is like a nest for diseases a nest of a nest is lot of birds will lay eggs and live in the nest in the same way this body is subject to diseases this body feels good and bad feelings both this body will experience hot and cold both this body is impermanent 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 this body is made out of muscles bones veins this body is not me not mine not under my control children follow the meditation properly then the feelings we feel through the body are also impermanent 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 the feelings are not me not mine not under my control this is the truth then the body and the feelings that we feel through the body which you call the tangibles are also impermanent 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 and the consciousness in the body is also impermanent and the body consciousness and the feelings that you feel through the body that combination is also impermanent and the feelings that you feel through the body contact is also impermanent 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 it's not under our control and then this mind at times this mind is good at times this mind is overwhelmed with anger or maybe with jealousy or maybe with greediness this mind is always changing that's why the buddha said 
This mind is impermanent, impermanent, impermanent. When the mind is not overwhelmed with anger, we don't remember that any time we can get angry. So if we know that our mind is impermanent, we will be always be prepared with the Buddha's teachings to deal with this undeveloped mind. This mind is impermanent, impermanent, impermanent. This mind is not me, not mine, not under my control. Then the thoughts in the mind, thoughts will come and go. Sometimes thoughts come to our mind to buy things, to buy toys and various things. Sometimes we forget Again, when we remember, we need it. When we forget, we don't need it. So even when we remember things at that time, if you can't get things from your parents, if you can forget those thoughts, you won't suffer, children. So remember, thoughts can be handled in our mind. The thoughts in the mind can be handled and can be managed the way we want. So the thoughts arise in the mind are also impermanent, impermanent, impermanent. The thoughts are not me, not mine, not under my control. And this mind will cognize the thoughts with the help of consciousness. And then the mind, consciousness, the thoughts, when those three things come into picture, the contact is formed. Then through that contact you will feel if you think good things, you will have good feelings. I mean, if you think bad things, you will have bad feelings. If you think things that are neither good, neither bad, you will have a feeling that is neither pleasant, neither unpleasant. So mind is chief. We should always be mindful to be aware of the thoughts in the mind and to have thoughts and to maintain thoughts in a way that we won't get attached but to be detached. So the contact born in the mind are also impermanent. The feelings born through the mind contact are also impermanent. Then, once the feelings are considered as impermanent, we won't crave for things. In this way, learn the impermanence meditation properly and think the impermanence nature truly as it is and be detached to the world and live happily by practicing the impermanence meditation. Sadhu, 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 Namo Buddhaya. Namo Buddhaya. Now we have come to good deeds, good deeds, good deeds. So, uh, Sadil and Shakil from Melbourne have done good deeds. And then Pahanli has done a good deed. Then uh, Charit Haputantri Putha has done a good deed. So, today the good deeds program, uh, we are going to show these videos. And then in between, uh, we will explain these things as well. So, let's watch this video. They are chanting a Dhammapada stanza and explaining in English and chanting in Sinhala. So let's watch to uh, Sadil and Shakil Puta's video from Melbourne, who is living in Melbourne. So let's watch that now. Namo Buddhaya. My name is Sadil. And my name is Shakil. We are students from Melbourne Mahamuna Sunday School. Today we are going to chant stanzas from the Dhammapada put answer. Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. Nabaje Papa ke mitte, Nabaje Puri Sadame, Baje the mitte Kalyane, Baje the Puri Suttame. Sing Halateruma. Papa Mitri Anga. As a Ruka Rane Epa Pahat Adahas Ati Pudgali Anvat As a Ruka Rane Epa Kalyana Vitrianga As a Ruka Rane Silo Samadi Prakna Adi Gunadaham Pirunu Utum Pudgali Anvat As a Ruka Rane 
సాధు 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 ఇంగ్లీష్ మీనింగ్ డూ నాట్ అసోసియేట్ విత్ బ్యాడ్ ఫ్రెండ్స్ అండ్ ఆల్వేస్ అసోసియేట్ విత్ వాయిస్ ఫ్రెండ్స్ అండ్ మార్క్స్ హూ ప్రాక్టీస్ నోబుల్ క్వాలిటీస్ సాధు 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 జాగరథోరీ టీగం సంతోజనం టీగోబాలనం సంసారో సద్దమ్మంగవిజానుతరుమ నునిద ఎహరగిన ఇందకినాట రాత్రియ గోడాక్తి గాయ బెహసట పత్వచ్చకినాట రుదున గోడాక్తి గాయ అన్న ఏ విధిహమై సద్ధర్మ అవబోధ నొక్కడ కత్తు బాలయంకి సంసార గమనత్ బహోమదిగా సాధు 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 ఇంగ్లీష్ మీనింగ్ ద నైట్ ఈజ్ వెరీ లాంగ్ ఫర్ ద వన్ హూ స్టేస్ అవైక్ త్రూ ద నాట్ అయోధున్ ఈజ్ వెరీ లాంగ్ ఫర్ ద టైర్డ్ వన్ సేమ్ వై the the sansara journey is very long for the one who hasn't realized the dhamma sadhu 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 the dhamma friends my brother and i enjoyed going to dhamma to sunday school we have never missed a session we miss going to asapur every friday evening putta vandanava we are now listening to shrota tv programs such as punchi ape shrota mirror of dhamma friends for kids monks in the morning and also shrota radio we continue to develop noble qualities and good behaviors we like to share our merits to local swami manse and all all other teacher monks from mahamelnava monastery may you all live a very long and healthy life and may you realize the four noble truths in this gautam buddha's dispensation sadhu 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 namo buddhaya tirunchana now the next is uh, pahanli dot pahanli dot has nicely uh, done a nice dhamma article so she has done a nice dhamma article uh, let's watch that now and then uh, we have a email from charitha putantri garu swamin mahas this picture and letter is from my younger son savi on what he learned last program many merits swamin mahas for helping our kids to learn dhamma may those uh, merit help swamin mahas to realize the four noble truths sadhu sadhu so uh, now let's watch savi's uh, uh, drawing as for the next good deed so there are other videos as well we'll watch them and uh, kiana dot has uh, made lunimiris so you can watch how kiana dot makes lunimiris so next time we should tell kiana dot to uh, tie her hair before making lunimiris if not we will have to eat lunimiris with hair so you watch the video so don't make lunimiris uh, with the falling hair tie the hair and make it so after watching mirror of dhamma program if you all can make lunimiris and offer it to the supreme buddha and to the uh, parents at home 
you can let us know and you all also can make another video of making lunamiri so any other curry that you like and send to us and we can teach even the adults to make lunamiris and other curries that you know to make so make some good videos of making various food and curries to supreme buddha and to mahasang and share with us we will show it to the whole world namo buddhaya my dear dhamma friends if you are offering dana to swami nanses you should give delicious food and spicy so today i'm going to make lunu miris these are the ingredients we we'll need you will have chili pieces onions chili pepper salt lime and moldy fish we don't have a vanger yet to chop all these ingredients so i'm going to use this food processor we have at home so now i'm going to put all the ingredients in the food processor so we're going to put the onions in the food processor and the then the moldy fish then the chili we need pepper now we're going to have salt We're gonna put the chili peas. Now we're gonna we're gonna close it. Now I'm going to squeeze the lime. This is the delicious spicy luna miris that I made. You can offer it to the Buddha puja with kimbap. And you can give it to the Swami Ram says my new are offering down. I hope you enjoyed this video. There on Saturday no with Daya. Namo Buddhaya my dear Dharma friends. On this Mumu Puri Day I offered my Luna Miris for the Supreme Buddha, our great teacher. There you are Saturday Namo Buddhaya. So today we watched many videos and many good deeds done by children by learning this and by watching these uh, good deeds. May you also have the opportunity to send your good deeds to our email address. 
and uh, to gain merit by propagating the buddha's teachings and by teaching others to do good deeds by teaching others to do good deeds therefore children i rejoice in all your good deeds the whole world is rejoicing in your good deeds may all the children have the opportunity to realize the four noble truths in this gautama buddha's dispensation sadhu 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 namo buddhaya dear children and uh, the other devotees now it's the time for us to show and develop gratefulness it's difficult to find people who are grateful very rare to find most of the people in this world are ungrateful so among those ungrateful people we can be grateful people by being grateful to the people who have helped us how can we be grateful to others we can recollect the good things that other people have done to us and we can do good things to others who have done good deeds for us who have helped us in life now we have come to share merit with others so merit can do wonders by sharing merit that will help a person to have long life span energy by sharing merit any person who rejoices in another person's merit will be able to have long life span comfort beauty energy a good voice then a good appearance wealth and then and then also wisdom so when you share merit you are giving long life to others you will give long life energy health wealth beauty comfort and wisdom too and merit can help you to meet kalyana mitras merit will help you to protect your precepts merit will help you to be born in the right place so sharing of merit will help others in many ways sharing of merit rejoicing in merit will help us in many ways so today to be grateful to the family who has sponsored for the mirror of dhamma program let us share merit with them and first of all let us share merit with all the gods who have helped us to make this dhamma propagation successful may all those devas rejoice in this merit develop in divinely happiness and may they develop in wisdom and faith in the buddha dhamma sangha and may they help us may they help us to overcome from this corona pandemic as soon as possible and may all the devas realize the four noble truths in this gautama buddha's dispensation sadhu 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 and may all our departed relatives especially the family who was sponsoring for the program uh, shiron lienage and his wife upeksha aruvani they would like to share merit with their father who has passed away on 18th april 2020 this is for give merit for him and uh, the father's name is chandrapal alinage so may all the departed relatives of all of us and departed relatives of uh, shiron alinage upeksha aruvani and senon alinage and vinon alinage uh, rejoice in this merit may all the departed relatives of all of us rejoice in this good deed of propagating dhamma and learning dhamma and practicing dhamma and may all the departed relatives escape from suffering as soon as possible sadhu 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 and may our teacher loko swami nwahans and may all the monks of mahamevana buddhist monasteries nuns of mahamevana buddhist monasteries and all over the world 
be well and happy be well and happy have long life well being comfort and uh, may all the monks and nuns good dreams good thoughts of realizing the four noble truths come true and may they uh, realize the four noble truths in this gautama buddha's dispensation sadhu 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 and may the family who sponsored for this program that is shiron lena ge upeksha ruvani and uh, their children sen on lena ge vin on lena ge may they be well and happy may they be well and happy may they develop in faith virtue knowledge in the buddha's teachings develop in effort develop in generosity and wisdom and may they have long life well being happiness and may they not have dangers may they realize the four noble truths in this gautama buddha's dispensation sadhu 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 and may all the kids who are taking part in this dhamma program may all the kids who have sent the good deeds and may everyone who watching this program and may all the shraddha tv monthly uh, the people who make monthly donations rejoice in this merit and with the power of this merit may everyone be well and happy and may all the coronavirus patients rejoice in this uh, good deeds and may they uh, overcome from this pandemic may they get rid of this coronavirus as soon as possible and may other people not get affected by this coronavirus may this world may the entire world get back to normal may we find a good vaccine a good medicine for this uh for this coronavirus and may all of us have the opportunity to get back to our normal day to day lives to get back to normal day to day routine and practice dhamma and do other activities as usual and live a peaceful life and may all this good merit help us to realize the four noble truths in this gautama buddha's dispensation sadhu 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 so we hope to meet you again with the mirror of dhamma program on next saturday namo buddhaya teruvan saranai